Death Knight class card review, fast and accurate. We're kicking things off with Staff of the Primus. This is a brand new one mana, one three weapon. After your hero attacks, shuffle a random plague into your opponent's deck. Plagues, of course, are a new mechanic for the Death Knight class. There are three of them. We have Blood Plague. When our opponent draws this, they'll take two damage and heal our hero for two. Unholy Plague, they take two damage and summon a 2 2 minion for us. And Frost Plague, when drawn, they take two damage and the next card they play will increase cost by one up to a maximum of 10. As a standalone card, this card isn't very good. I don't expect it to see play as a standalone card, but it is going to be a key component of the Plague package overall. Next up, we have the Distressed Cavaldir. This is a two mana, three, two death rattle. Shuffle two random plagues into your opponent's deck. This is also an undead minion. Again, as a standalone card, this is likely not very good. Maybe it could sneak into an unholy aggro deck, but likely the only way that this card is going to see play is if it's included in an entire plague package that will be included into a deck. Down with a ship, a two mana spell. Deal three damage to a minion. If it dies, shuffle two random plagues into your opponent's deck. Again, as a standalone card, I don't think this sees play, especially with the one frost, one unholy rune requirement, but likely to be a key component of the plague package overall. Frozen over, an additional two mana spell. Both players draw two cards. Your opponent cannot play them next turn. Interesting option for draw for the Death Knight class. Again, I don't expect it to see play. Likely we're not going to be playing this to draw cards, but if it's randomly generated by Nerubian Vizier or the school teacher, then potentially we're going to see this card uh, being used in some games in that form. But overall, likely not going to be good enough to make it into a deck on purpose. And it has the drawback of drawing your opponent's cards. Even though they can't play them next turn, your opponent having access to those two cards the following turn could actually be a big deal. Really don't think the card is all that great and don't think it's going to see much intentional play. Northern Navigation, another two mana spell. Discover a spell from your deck. If it's a frost spell, freeze a random enemy minion. Being able to discover a spell from your deck and tutor that spell is an interesting mechanic for the Death Knight class. It does have the condition that it will freeze an enemy minion if you tutor a frost spell. Again, I'm not sure that tutoring a specific spell is going to be all that great for a deck that's going to be running Frost Runes. So again, I don't think that this card is going to see play on purpose, but it may be good enough if it's randomly generated to be selected from a Discover. Eulogizer, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three Forge card. Battlecry, spend 3 corpses to deal 3 damage. Forge, gain them instead. We can see here that the Forged version, you will gain 3 corpses and deal 3 damage. The important thing to note here is that if you're going to forge a card, likely you're going to want to do it ahead of time. And so you can think of it as paying two mana for the forge effect rather than the hero power. Is that going to be worth it? And the answer for me is I'm thinking probably not. I don't think you necessarily ever want to run this card as a three mana three three to deal three. We've seen that effect before. It's really not strong enough in current Hearthstone to be able to see play. And when it comes to uh, being able to gain corpses from the forge effect, there really aren't any good corpse spenders for the Death Knight class, so basically this, we would have to spend five mana to generate three corpses that we don't really need anyway. I don't expect this card to see play. Pelia, the Death Knight Legendary, a four mana, four, four, battle cry, shuffle all three plagues into your opponent's deck. Plagues they draw this game are unending. What's been revealed so far is that unending plague simply means that when your opponent draws a plague, the effect happens and then it gets shuffled back into their deck. So if you're able to get this down on turn three or turn four as part of the plague package, potentially you can load their deck with a lot of plagues that just continuously stay in their deck ready to deal more damage. Uh, this is certainly going to be a key component of the plague package. Again, as a standalone card, it's not going to be good enough. Tomb Trader, we have a four mana, four, three battle cry. Destroy a plague in your opponent's deck to deal three damage to all enemy minions. Not necessarily a big fan of destroying the plagues that we place in our opponent's deck, but it is going to give this particular plague package the ability to be able to uh, deal three to all enemy minions. Again, as a standalone card, this likely sees no play whatsoever. The only hope for the card is to be able to be played as part of the plague package in a Death Knight deck. Up next, we have the Death Knight Titan, the Primus. It's an 8 mana 7, 9. After this uses an ability, discover a card with that rune. Those runes are Rune of Blood, destroy an enemy minion, this minion and your hero gain its health. For example, if we destroy a 10 health minion, this becomes a 719 and our hero gains 10 health. We have Runes of the Unholy, summon two, 3-3 three, three Undead with Taunt and Reborn. And we have the Rune of Frost, the next spell you cast costs three less 
and has spell damage plus three. Keeping in mind that we're going to be able to discover a card with these runes as we use the abilities. One of the key factors when evaluating Titans is going to be how likely are they to still be able to live the following turn. Single target removal is going to be able to kill this, but again, if you play the blood rune first, you know, it's going to uh, have a really big health total. Could potentially make it harder to remove. Not quite sure how likely it is that we get to use multiple abilities with this card. Again, if it only lives one turn, we only get to use one ability. And it's a little bit expensive at 8 mana for my taste. I think you probably put this in Blood Death Knight. Outside of that, I think it may actually be just a little bit too slow to fit into what we've seen to be the traditional Unholy Aggro Death Knight as well as the Frost Death Knight. We'll have to see, but again, I think it's probably just a little bit too expensive to see play outside of Blood. And then rounding things out, we have the Chain Guardian. This is an 11 mana 8-5 with Rush and Reborn. Costs one less for each Plague shuffled into the enemy deck this game. This card rounds out the Plague package. I honestly think it's going to be too expensive. We don't necessarily want to play this in a Plague deck. When you really sit down and think about all of the Plague cards, shuffling six Plagues into your opponent's deck actually sounds like a lot. It's going to take quite a few turns to get that many Plagues into your opponent's deck. And at that point, it's still going to cost five mana. It only has five health. It's basically like a single target removal that potentially you get to use twice because of the Reborn effect. In the end, I think it's too slow, and I think it's not necessarily going to see play. The Death Knight cards that I'm most excited about for Hearthstone Titans are actually the Plague Package. I've come up with two possible ways to be able to utilize that package. The first is right here, and this is really just a Plague Death Knight. Win condition here is going to be to shuffle as many Plagues into our opponent's deck as we possibly can. They're going to be taking damage every single time one of those Plagues is drawn. Taking a closer look at the list, Bodybaggers making the list just because we're going to need corpses. Then we're running the full Plague Package, that's going to be the Staff, the Distressed Cavaldir, down with the ship, as well as the Legendary Helia. Two copies of Instrument Tech, just to make sure that we can tutor out the weapons. Again, we want to be able to shuffle those Plagues early and often. Two copies may be a bit overkill, with only two weapons in the deck. Potentially you could cut one of these, if we could find something that we would rather play in the deck. Two copies of Mosh Pit, just to be able to give minions reborn. Of course, we would want to focus on minions that would have a Death Rattle that are going to be putting Plagues into our opponent's deck. Plague Strike and Hardcore Cultist both going into the deck, simply because I feel like we're going to have to have removal and we're going to need to be able to fight for the board to make sure that we don't die before we can get our opponent to draw enough Plagues to actually be able to kill them. The Ruby and Vizier, just a really good discover. Of course, there's going to be quite a bit of undead in this list. And so we can discover things like a Death Growl, like an Unholy Frenzy, just to be able to get extra mileage out of the Death Rattles that are going to be shuffling Plagues into our opponent's deck. Ravenous Kraken, again, just a way to be able to get extra Death Rattles. We can target this Distressed Cavaldir to be able to uh, kill it. Sets off the Death Rattle, then when this dies, the Death Rattle is going to bring us another Cavaldir. Again, just trying to shuffle more Plagues into our opponent's deck. School Teacher, again, just really powerful discover. We could hit things like Death Growl. We could even hit Down with the Ship. We could hit the Unholy Frenzy. Again, in an attempt to just to shuffle as many plagues as we possibly can into our opponent's deck. A Tomb Trader making the deck. I don't necessarily like the idea of destroying a plague, but I will say that uh, dealing three damage to all minions on the enemy side of the board, again, we're going to have to fight for the board. We don't want to get overwhelmed in the early game because it's going to take time to shuffle the plagues, and then it's going to take even longer for our opponent to draw those plagues. So really just looking for ways to be able to stay alive. Two copies of the Yelling Yodeler. Again, we're going to want to target the Death Rattle minions that are going to shuffle plagues into our opponent's deck with this. Two copies of Bone Shredder. Again, we're going to need corpses for this card to be able to trigger and gain the Death Rattle of a random friendly minion that died this game. Of course, the only Death Rattles are going to be the Distressed Cavaldir as well as the Death Rattle from the Ravenous Kraken. And so this, again, is going to allow us to be able to shuffle additional plagues into our opponent's deck. Rounding out the list with some card draw here, we have Magatha to be able to draw some of the minions from our deck. We only have four spells in the deck. That's going to be the Plague Strikes as well as the Down with the Ship. And so this list, I feel like, is going to give us the best possible chance to be able to shuffle plagues into our opponent's deck. And uh, one note here, this card is going to be an automatic keep in the mulligan for this list. The plagues they draw this game are unending. What's been revealed so far is that when that plague is drawn, the effect goes off, and then it's shuffled back into our opponent's deck. So if you can get this down early and then shuffle in a lot of plagues, it's going to really, really ramp up the damage potential of how quickly you're going to be able to win the game. 
Outside of that, the general game plan early on is going to be to stay alive early. We don't necessarily want to play a Distressed Cavaldir on two if we have it in our hand. Plus, we don't want it to die. We want to be able to get multiple uses out of the Death Rattle. So, you know, maybe if you have Mosh Pit and the Corpses on two, you could play the Cavaldir on three. Or potentially turn five, you play Cavaldir with a Ravenous Kraken. But we really just don't want to waste this Death Rattle. This particular Death Rattle is going to be one of the ways that we're going to be able to get potentially a lot of Plagues into our opponent's deck. Option number two for the Plague Package is to actually include the Plague Package into the existing Unholy Aggro deck. We can cut some of the lesser performing cards to be able to fit that package in. Important to note here that Down With The Ship is the only card in the Plague Package that requires a Frost, a frost Rune. All of the other cards are Unholy Runes. And so we can actually just work these in to be able to get those plagues into the unholy aggro death knight this could actually be the best way to be able to utilize the package but you're going to realize that this deck is basically the same existing deck that we already have maybe just spiced up just a little bit with that plague package that's going to do it for the death knight class card review fast and accurate i'm uncorrupt thank you for watching